Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's the amazing cast of 1978 Superman. By now, we take for granted that every year will bring the next massively entertaining spectacle that is the modern superhero movie. But before the late 1970s, superheroes were consigned to campy TV shows. This all changed when Superman hit theaters. At the time, Superman was the most expensive movie ever made, but it took a major risk by casting an unknown as the Man of Steel. A risk that more than paid off when hidden Jim Christopher Reeve blew audiences away and became a massive star. The film's state-of-the-art special effects, Oscar-nominated score, and fantastic acting combined to make Superman an enormous success and one of the highest-grossing movies of the 1970s. Did you see Superman in theaters? Let us know in the comments below. We read them all. Also, please like and subscribe to our throwback channel so you won't miss a single video that we premiere. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and let's remember the Superman cast. Christopher Reeve, Superman. For an actor to step into the iconic blue spandex and play the role of Superman seems like an almost inhuman task. Superman seems almost too perfect, and the producers of Superman did initially struggle to fill the Man of Steel's boots, depleting dozens of auditions before finally settling on little-known theater actor Christopher Reeve. Little known but not little, standing at 6'4", with piercing blue eyes, a chiseled jaw, and having packed on 30 pounds of muscle for the role, Reeve certainly looked like a superhero. His performance was universally praised, as he portrayed both the bumbling Clark Kent Oh, hi, Clark. Hi, Lois. How'd you like- And the dashing Superman superbly. After this first success, Reeve went on to have a fantastic acting career, starring in all three Superman sequels, oh, yeah. as well as a personal favorite of my household, a film titled Somewhere in Time, an achingly beautiful film starring he and Jane Seymour. Is time travel possible? That is a question. Tragically, in 1995, while competing in an equestrian competition, Reeve was thrown from his horse, landing squarely on his head. This accident left him unable to move his arms and legs for the rest of his life. But did Reeve let that slow him down? Not at all. He received a SAG award in 1998 for the TV adaption of Rear Window, and that same year won a Grammy for the spoken word version of his autobiography, Still Me. Reeve also created the Christopher Reeve Foundation, which to date has raised tens of millions of dollars for people with disabilities. He unfortunately passed away in 2004. But if there ever was a real life Superman, then Christopher Reeve certainly fits the bill. Gene Hackman, Lex Luthor. After casting Reeve as Superman, the film's producers knew that they needed an established star to play his archenemy, Lex Luthor. And so they turned to one of the biggest names in Hollywood, starring in Disaster Smash The Poseidon Adventure and winning an Oscar for The French Connection in 1971. Thank you very much. I, I, uh... Hackman played the comedic foil to Superman. It's open. Come in. As one critic put it, he was, quote, a used car salesman wielding nuclear missiles. Hackman reprised Luther for both Superman 2 II and 3, and continued to have a stellar film career. No one will ever forget The Birdcage or The Royal Tenenbaums, plus another Oscar-winning performance in 1992's Unforgiven. He retired from acting in 2004 in order to focus on his second love, writing historical fiction novels, bringing to a close the career of one of Hollywood's most accomplished actors. Margot Kidder, Lois Lane. Clark Kent's confidant, capable co-worker, and love interest? Kidder got her start working in Canadian TV and film before she fell into her most iconic role. You've got me! Who's got you? Kidder appeared in all three Superman sequels, but after she objected to Donner being removed as the director, her part in Superman 3 was cut down to 12 lines and 5 minutes of screen time. Post Lois Lane, Kidder continued to act, most notably as Kathy Lutz in the original Amityville Horror. She was also very well known for her liberal activism, stridently opposing the first war in Iraq and supporting numerous environmental causes. Sadly, Kidder was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1989, a condition that she struggled with until she tragically passed away from a drug and alcohol related suicide in 2018. Ned Beatty, Otis. Every supervillain needs a henchman. Enter Otis, a fumbling screw up who loudly pronounced his boss's name as Luthor. Wait a minute, Miss Luthor. 
Otis was played by Ned Beatty, a character actor who had achieved acclaim for supporting roles in Deliverance, where he very memorably squealed like a pig in his film debut, as well as an Oscar nomination for Network. Beatty's inept bumbling provided Superman's comic relief, and although Luther might not have appreciated his shenanigans, we the audience certainly did. Beatty also appeared in Superman 2 and went on to have an amazing prolific career, most memorably in Rudy as well as the villainous stuffed bear in Toy Story 3. He appeared in over 60 movies and 40 TV shows between 1978 and his retirement in 2013, which works out to more than three projects a year. Exhausting, but very impressive for a man Variety once described as the hardest working man in Hollywood. Valerie Perrine, Eve Teschmacher. The beautiful, buxom girlfriend of Lex Luthor, although initially an accomplice in his plots, Miss Eve ultimately betrays Luthor by saving a drowning Superman from a kryptonite necklace, cheekily stealing a kiss along the way. Perrine's early work included 1974's critically acclaimed Lenny, for which she received the Cannes Film Festival Best Actress Award, and an Oscar nomination. She later reprised her role as the bad girl with a conscience in Superman 2, but her career went downhill after she received a Razzle nomination as the worst actress for 1980s Can't Stop the Music. Why is it I can't get it on with the good guys? Her Hollywood status never recovered, and although she had a long career, it was mostly relegated to TV and cameos in such movies as 2000's What Women Want. Perrine retired from acting in 2016, and although she struggles with Parkinson's disease, she's still going strong. Glenn Ford, Pa Kent. Superman's adoptive father and moral compass, actor Glenn Ford was already an elder statesman in Hollywood. He was consistently one of the top box office draws throughout the 50s and 60s, appearing in the hit movies Gilda and The Big Heat. You tell me what my business is. After Superman, Ford's career slowed considerably. However, in 1992, he was awarded France's highest military honor for his service during the Second World War. Talk about some post-acting success. Unfortunately, Ford passed away in 2006, but he will always be remembered as Superman's guiding light. Marlon Brando, Jor-El. By 1978, Marlon Brando was an absolute legend, having already won two Oscars and been nominated for a further five. That doesn't necessarily mean he liked to work, however. When approached to play Superman's biological father, Brando had some unique ideas for the character. He tried to convince director Richard Donner that Krypton was populated by talking bagels, so that he would only have to do voiceover work and not actually appear in the film. And while a planet full of sentient bread sounds kind of awesome and totally hysterical, Donner was shockingly not convinced, and Brando agreed to do the movie in person, as long as he only had to work a maximum of 12 days, and got paid $3.7 million, and received 11.75% of the film's gross, which eventually amounted to a further $19 million. So Brando made $22 million for only 20 minutes of screen time. I always was always impressed with the smile that you got in the morning, all too often in direct proportion to the salary you were getting. After Superman, Brando continued to work his acting magic and received another Oscar nomination for A Dry White Season in 1989, before retiring after 2001's The Score. He was also a lifelong campaigner for the rights of Native Americans, even refusing his 1972 Oscar to protest their treatment in Hollywood. Brando passed away in 2004, but he will forever remain one of the most famous icons of the 20th century. Before we wrap up, a good rewatch challenge for you. Try and spot John Ratzenberger before everyone knew his name as Cliff from Cheers, with a small role as the Navy's first controller. Now 73, this was only the seventh credit of John's stellar career. What a solid cast. Almost Steel-like, one might say. Who was your favorite character? Was anyone ever better in these roles? Or are these performances iconic? Let us know below in the comments. We want to talk to you. As always, make sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more throwback treats. As always, from all of us at Do You Remember, thanks for watching.